Hello everyone, my name is Jask, and today I will be sharing the coloring process for one of my Dungeons & Dragons characters. I did not record line art for this one, as it did not cross my mind to do so until after I had finished it. But anyway, this is Natoris Calhorn. He is an elf, wild magic sorcerer, and warlock from one of the games that I play. Natoris, or Tori, or Nate, whatever you want to call him, he's 287 years old and has spent most of his life studying anything that he thought was interesting. He eventually dipped his toes into magical learning, but that wasn't something that he started doing immediately. It's more or less a recent form of study. He was also not born a sorcerer. Natoris was well into his path as a wizard under the school of evocation, and then he ended up becoming a sorcerer after having an unexpected run-in with a god or godlike entity of the undead. He witnessed this figure's summoning and sustained a couple of wounds across the palms of both of his hands, and then he woke up and found that his magic was not working the same way it had before. The wounds were, to some degree, magical, and according to several people that he asked about them along his adventure, their effects had reached down into his soul, which is why his connection to magic and casting had changed so drastically after he got these wounds. Natoris would later go on to make a pact with this same entity who wounded him in the first place, thus becoming a warlock. Pacting also healed up these wounds, so he's got neat little scars there instead of a couple of gnarly open gashes all the time. Uh, in terms of personality, he's a very wordy guy. He's always using too many words in a sentence, or using words that are uh, unnecessarily synonymous. That's the only way that I can think of putting it, but he doesn't do it in a pretentious way. He's just wordy and he does not simplify things. It's just how he talks, and it's kind of how I tend to talk as well, so he's very comfortable for me to play and speak for. Natoris does not really have a moral compass, I guess. If he has a goal, he isn't as concerned with the means as he is with the ends. He doesn't have anything for or against killing necessarily, and the goodness and the badness of his choices fluctuate depending on how invested or interested he is in a situation or a goal. Like, one time he broke into a 14-year-old girl's diary to see if she had written down any clues, uh, for an investigation, we were looking for someone who had gone missing. Looking back on it, it was very unlikely that she had information, considering that she was 14 years old. But I guess Natoris is just nosy. The only sort of moral or ideal that Natoris has is to never tell a lie. He answers every question truthfully even if he doesn't want to. But that does not mean he has to tell the whole truth. Our bard once described him as like a more angsty genie with the way that he'll twist words to benefit how much information he wants to give. Even then, he doesn't let himself stretch the truth too much. And if you catch him in a divulgatory mood, he will just keep on talking. The only exception to lying that he has is when he's being sarcastic, but it's such a degree of obvious sarcasm that I'm not really sure it crosses into lying territory. There's a fine line there, and I have trouble with sarcasm sometimes because of it. He really likes birds and languages, stealing useless items, and he's a bit of an alcoholic, but he's so uncannily lucky with constitution saves that he's only ever gotten buzzed once or twice. He one time outdrank a sphinx in her own home and didn't suffer any effects from it. It was pretty impressive.
I have gotten so caught up in talking about him as a person that I have neglected to talk about his new look. So this is a fresh take on his appearance at level 10, which is far more fashionable and classy looking than what he had going on before. If you follow me on any other social media, you've probably seen what he used to look like. Previously, he had a plain blue tunic and a long black coat, both of which were sleeveless. One of the shoulders on the coat was torn up and a little tattered, and in one of our first battles, the edges of that coat got singed quite a bit at the bottom, and I carried that over into future drawings. He never got it mended for some reason, and he still has it, but I did not incorporate it into this design, mostly because I couldn't get it to mesh very well. It covered up way too much of what he was wearing in this outfit, so I decided to just not put it on. He also had gloves that covered his forearms to the top of his hands, similar to the ones that he's wearing now, but they're not exactly the same. The belt across his hips used to have uh, a loose buckle as well as a book-sized pouch hanging from it, but again, I couldn't get that to mesh very well with this new design, so I ended up getting rid of it. He also has a new hairstyle. I liked the idea of Tori being really good at braiding and decided to change up his hair to reflect the skill. Before, it was tied back into a loose ponytail and his hair was significantly less white. The whole business with becoming a sorcerer resulted with some patches of white appearing here and there, and when he made a pact with that same figure, the patches of white started growing in in greater quantities than it used to. To be honest, it does not have any in-game significance as far as I'm aware, I just did it for flavor and because I liked the idea of black and white hair. The white sash and the undershirt are the only two things that I carried over to this design without changing anything about them. The chest holter for his daggers, his gloves, and the wrist ornaments got a couple of changes, but nothing huge. I wanted to recycle as much of the original feeling of his outfit as possible, so some of the elements are very similar. Uh, he also has a new friendship bracelet that was recently turned into Black Opal, courtesy of our bard, whom I love very much. I never had a proper reference for Natorus before now, which is kind of odd. I have so many characters and I'm constantly making new ones and I'm always making references and just sketching them in different poses, but I've never made a full-fledged reference for Natorus for some reason. I drew him plenty of times enough anyway and I didn't really need one after a while, but I really like drawing him and I like having art for all my characters. Plus, since I wanted to update his look for a while, I figured now was a good chance. However, going through with a redesign and actually putting all this effort into a reference is potentially pointless. Perhaps it's not- uh, pointless is not the right word. It's closer to, um, unnecessary and self-indulgent, I think. Tori made a series of decisions that his fellow party members did not like at all. A couple of them threatened him about it, and being the coward he is, Natorius took the very first opportunity he had to run away. As such, he's no longer with the party, and since he's not around anymore, there's not much of a reason for me to have such a detailed reference or a new look at all. I won't get into the events that snowballed into these circumstances because that is quite a story but it is unknown if Tori will be returning to the party in the future. I personally would love nothing more than for him to come back, but it feels like that decision is mostly out of my hands. I had him doing some stuff to forward the goals of the party while he was away, but some more stuff happened and it seems like he's even less in my control now than he was before, so I'm not necessarily getting my hopes up, but you know, we'll see. In the meantime, I have rejoined the party as a new character entirely. 
Regardless of my bitterness about Tori not being welcome at the moment, I've always loved this game and the characters and the people that I play with. It's- I just really like it, so I wasn't about to quit just because my boy got kicked out. That's a little silly. My new character is actually Tori's younger brother. He's a bounty hunter who is searching for Natorus, and this is a decision that I will admit I made out of spite alone. <laughs> I love Natorus, and I wasn't about to let go of my Kelhorn character, so the brother was the next best thing. I've consequently decided to keep my active characters within the Kelhorn family, because it's a little bit sad and also funny. I joke about how if this brother somehow messes up and can't stay with the party either, that I'll join up a third time as their mother, who catches wind of all the trouble her boys have gotten into and has thus left home to find and reprimand her sons. I like the brother well enough, he's got a different personality and a way of looking at life, and he also has a moral compass, so it's different to have to play a character who knows the difference between a good thing and a bad thing, so it's really fun. The switch in characters was and still is a little bit sour, but I do look forward to the possibility of a confrontation between the two of them. There's a lot of tension between them due to backstory reasons, and it would be a lot of fun to deal with. But I will save any other details about the Kelhorns for other videos. Outside of this particular campaign, I've been able to bring Natoris into two other settings. The first one was for a Nordic holiday festival one-shot that my friend ran. In that setting, Tori was a full warlock with Odin as his patron, and that was really fun to explore. Natoris is already super into learning and knowledge, and has gone to many lengths to acquire his knowledge. Odin is very well known for all the sacrifices he has made for the things that he gained, so I found Odin to be the most fitting patron for this build. Tori had a raven familiar as part of the perks of his pact, and I flavored his actions and speech as much as I could with Norwegian phrases and words. I've been learning the language and thought that this was a great opportunity to make use of it and to just practice speaking it casually. I named the raven Sanhetsukr, which means truth seeker, and his weapon was named Kronet Orm, or crowned eagle. All of the weapons, including his daggers and his quarterstaff from every build are named after different types of eagles. Natoris is also an NPC in my homebrew setting. I'll be running a campaign for my sister and a group of her friends starting in the summer, where he will eventually make an appearance. The party is going to need to meet him for a few reasons, but whether or not they choose to try to be long-term allies with him or only do, you know, their one mission objective that involves him is something that only the future knows. Tori holds a very special place in my heart, and I'm looking forward to that whole encounter, how he's going to mesh with that setting, and everything about it. Even if he doesn't stick around for very long, it'll still be fun. But I won't get too much into his role in that setting, just in case. Anyway, that's about it for this speed paint video. I hope you enjoyed watching me color Natoris. There will certainly be more videos with him and his brother and the other Kelhorns and my other characters in general in the future, so I hope that you come back around to see those. If you want me to draw anything particular or have a question about this character or that character, feel free to ask and I will ramble about that too. Thank you once again for your time, and I will see you in the future.